Welcome to CAS 103, Introduction to Windows, Columbia Gorge Community College, the Dallas, Oregon, Linda Hewitt instructor. This video is for those of you using Windows 7 and how to use WordPad and Paint. WordPad and Paint are considered accessories, so you're going to go to Start button. You're going to go to All Programs. You're going to scroll down until you get to the folder that says Accessories, and you're going to open it. Now, we're going to mention Notepad for just a second. You're going to open that, or I'm going to open that. Notice how basic it is. There's really very little with it. We don't want Notepad. Notepad is the wrong program. You actually want WordPad. And when you look at WordPad, you can see it's a lot more robust program. It has a lot more font control, centering, painting, drawing, I mean, all sorts of different things in it that you can do. So you're going to type a document in here about your experience with computers, or if this is really your very, very first adventure into a computer or into a Windows computer, maybe you were a Mac user in the past or an iPad user, and you're just really, for the first time, kind of voyaging into Windows, that's fine. Sort of explain what you would like to get out of this class. I'm going to type in this gobbledygook here, and then I'm going to save it. I'm going to go File, Save As. Now, for this assignment only, I want you to change the file type. Don't do it on anything else. This is a one-time, one-thing-only change. I just want you to practice being able to change file formats. For the people using Windows 8, they may not get this practice, but for you guys on 7 still, you're going to get a chance to see how this works. And why would you want to do this? Because there are times in the future that you may want your word to be in a certain format, whatever you've typed or your picture in a certain format, so it's compatible for somebody else that they're going to use it, or it's compatible to be used a different way. Learning to change file formats is a really basic skill that saves lots and lots of people work. I was just typing on Facebook today to a friend how to change file formats that would have saved her work. She was like, I need to buy this program and do this and do this, and I'm like, no, you just need to do this. And the program will do it for you if you know how to change file types. So it's a useful skill. So you're going to save it as a plain text document this one and only time. It normally saves as a rich text, and that's what you want all the rest of the time except for this one time. So you're going to save it as plain text. It should say TXT here. You're going to put it on your flash drive or your desktop, wherever you're saving things. You are not going to call it document because document means nothing other than you're going to have way too many of them. Okay, something like that will work fine for a title. You pick your own and then you're going to save it. It will say you're about to change it to a text only format, which is good since you were asked to for this one assignment. Notice I keep going back to that word one because sometimes people get confused and think everything needs to have this done. Nope, this is just a practice. You get to do it one time. And I now saved it. Now, oops, I was supposed to leave that open. My bad. It will open it again because it was there. Now, a quick warning. Sometimes people close this and open this again. Don't close it and open it again because your computer has to be set to open this in Word. Pad, otherwise it will open it in Notepad. So make sure you leave it open. If you have closed it by accident, like I just did, and I've lost it on top of that. I thought I put it on my desktop. Yes, right here. I'm going to need to like right click it, do an open with, and ask it to open it in WordPad. If I don't do that, it's going to want to try to open it in Notepad. I can also choose default program, which will allow me to switch it to always open in WordPad. And after this, WordPad will always open your TXT files. I think that's a real reasonable change to make because who wants to use Notepad? It's so limited and almost so useless. So that's a change I would actually make if I was on your computer and using it. So now I've got this open, I'm just going to minimize it right here. And I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to open my paint program. Paint is a drawing program. You are going to draw me a picture in paint. It is not going to be modern art of scribbles. However, it may be a very strange looking, say, dog. 
no, I am not an artist. Maybe I should make this a bunny. It is looking a lot more bunny than it is puppy. I'm thinking a little cotton tail back here is a lot more hope. So I've made my poor sad looking little bunny here. This is not an art class. I am going to add a nice yellow sun. I might reach kindergarten drawing here yet if I'm careful. And there are ways to color things in and you can use brushes and you can use the fill. So if I click here, I can change sizes and I can do different things. But for right now, I'm just going to give my bunny some green grass to make my bunny happy. Notice how quickly my bunny that was a dog suddenly became a bunny. I'm not arguing about it at this point. Okay. So now that I've completed this <clears throat> wonderful drawing, I am going to go ahead and save it. Again, we're going to do one of those file changes. It's usually saved as a PNG file. PNG files are not real common. They're more of a Word Microsoft product. It's more of a paint project. GIFs, bitmaps, JPEGs, those are all much more common. You're going to save it into the JPEG format. This is what happens when you're trying to multitask on your computer. It jumps up and does strange things. You're going to save it in the JPEG format. That is the same format that your computer camera card is moved to and is saved in that way. Again, you're not going to leave it untitled. Since I decided that had to be a bunny and not a dog, we're going to go with that. And I'm going to save it. Now I have two windows open. I have both my computer word pad and my paint. I can size those by the way if you've never discovered that you can make this so that they're smaller and you can actually put two windows side by side on your screen by grabbing the top. I can do a little more sizing if I want to by grabbing edges. I can get it small enough I have the scroller bar but I can get it centered. I can get this one worked over a little closer to give my rabbit a little bit more space here. And there we go. I now have two windows side by side. Or I can make them both full size. And the flying window you can switch between tabs here on the bottom. I should be able to get flying windows, but I'm not for whatever reason today. But that's a really cool feature that's written up in your book and I use it. I think it's because I'm on the guest account. It's limited my capabilities on my own machine, which is a little frustrating. But you should be able to do it. It does show you how to do it in your textbook. And then, of course, you'll save.